Okay. So, um, you know what a scribble is? Is that nonsensical non sketch that one makes, you know, absent-mindedly without thinking. But when I ask Wolf Prix what he recommends students in architecture and the architects in general, he said, don't think. So how could you make an architecture without thinking? It's very possible. And he does it. And he does it sometimes uh, very convincingly. So does uh, Frank Gehry. But you, know, you, you have to understand without thinking means without that rational uh, uh, thinking that we are accustomed to. This doesn't mean there is no thinking, but it's a different kind of thinking. It's a thinking that is uh, maybe tumultuous, that, that assumes the unconscious, is, is, uh, is Dionysian perhaps, is maybe sometimes dark, is, uh, is um, you know, is dangerous. It is dangerous. But there is something very, uh, very, uh, I would say, uh, positive about uh, those dangers implied in an, an architecture uh, that is uh, so-called born without thinking. Musgalele architecturale. Well, what is this? What is this nonsense? No, but please consider this: that when you when you uh, are at a boring conference, uh, or uh, I don't know, in a classroom, and you have to take notes of something, and then uh, kind of bored, you go to the last page of the of your notes book, and there you begin to scribble, right? You scribble, you do mandalas, you do all kinds of really scribbles. Those scribbles have a, an important psychological content because those scribbles express something that is within you and needs to be externalized. It is very possible to, to do an uh, <clears throat> uh, Architectura Musgalita, uh, very possible. Hope him allow, of course, they cannot uh, miss the tra this train. And I, I'll show first the rooftop remodeling, which launched them uh, on the on the path that they uh, were active on since then. Uh, this was the smudged sketch that initiated that project. You know, if you show something like this in the School of Architecture in our country, you'll be dismissed. <clears throat> you'll be you'll be considered uh, not being serious. You'll be considered uh, mad. You'll be considered, uh, in, uh, you know, uh, out of place. But again, we are not invited to the Museum of Modern Art in New York. We are not uh, receiving the commissions that uh, they receive. And the question is why? Well, the answer is not difficult because we don't bring anything new. That's why, you know, we are afraid to, 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 to experiment. And they are not afraid to experiment. So, you know, this is a sketch derived from the smudged uh, initial sketch. I've heard Wolf Prix at Columbia University saying at that time when he had a par partner, Helmut, I always have problems remembering correctly his family name. He said, we began every project by not reading the program at all, closing our eyes, exploding with lines on paper and after a while we opened the eyes and then we tried to make sense of, of those lines of that musgalitura in essence and they built it uh, and uh, it's 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 a work which is not uh, perfect but after all a musgalitura can in its essence is not perfect the constructivism, of course, this roof uh, remodeling from 1984 in Vienna was, uh, so you see, they started from here. But we, we, are, we are encouraged in, in our culture to consider this nonsense, that this is not architecture. Well, you know, they transform this sketch into what you see here. Uh, this is the longitudinal section and uh, the plan and uh, another sketch. So all in all, they built it. 
they built it. Uh, it's it's a spider here. It's some kind of a you know insect, metallic insect built on the top of an old building uh, right across the street, actually, from a very important work by uh, Otto Wagner, the postal office. Uh, it's difficult to see this work from the street because it's on the I don't know eighth floor, tenth floor. Uh, but uh, you can see these antennas of the building a little bit. Anyway, of course, the functional is the trembling, quiet, and, uh, and uh, you know, timid uh, functional is to say, what is this nonsense? Well, you know, this nonsense is interesting. It's provocative. It's, uh, is unsettling us, is insecure, is about that insecurity of our own soul in a way, you know, but uh, to talk about such matter, matters to the timid functionalist is to, to address uh, uh, deaf, uh, deaf ears. Anyway, uh, so this was actually, this was considered besides the, uh, the, 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 the own home of, uh, of uh, Frank Gehry, his own home uh, of Frank Gehry, the first deconstructivist uh, buildings. Actually, Wolf Brick thinks that his is actually the first, but who cares, you know, the first, the second, it doesn't really matter. It was built in 1984. Now, he built, he likes roofs. Wolf Brick said that uh, there are architects who love basements. He likes, like, uh, there are architects who love what is in the middle, and then there are architects who love roofs, and he named himself and Zaha Hadid. This work is excellent, I think, and he built it with students in Perugia, in Italy. You know, it, it, it is called an energy roof. I don't know. I mean, he is a, an opportunist, you know, because everybody talks about energy and saving energy. He made an energy roof. In essence, is an expressionist gesture, very impressive, I would say. And I like the fact, I mean, most architects, if they would have done between these two buildings a so-called energy roof, they would have done it, you know, with parallel uh, rows of, uh, you know, uh, devices uh, to, you know, parallel with, uh, with the cornices of the, the existing buildings. But he actually contorted the whole thing so uh, when I was uh, looking for material about this uh, energy roof in uh, Perugia, I, I came across, uh, or there is somewhere an, an article with this title, Genius Logi versus uh, Zeitgeist. Geist. But look at this, it, it's like uh, like Kunzmeu in Romanian. It's, it's, I think it's fantastic. I, 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 I like it very much. I, I think it's one of his best, their best works, if not the best. It's a small work, but, but look, all of a sudden, the unknown is brought into architecture. And it's nothing wrong to bring the unknown into architecture. I think we need a sense of wonderment, you know? I mean, if everything is predictable and already seen, we die of boredom, Dom. that's the truth. all important architects brought something new to architecture and to culture. Is this so difficult to understand? Is this so difficult to understand by the, by the, you know, the people who, who run education in, in Romania? Uh, sorry. Uh, here you see the, the, the fragments that he used in order to compose, to create this energy roof. I think they are very nice. You know, and they are all interesting in themselves, but when they are brought together, you know, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the feeling of newness uh, is, is amplified. And as I said, he built it with, uh, with students, architecture students. Okay, th this is another sketch talking about Musgalitura. Well, it is a musgalitura, but I love, I actually love this word. I, I don't think the, 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 the English words are as good as the Romanian word. Musgalitura is a beautiful, beautiful word. And I really would like to promote 
the idea of uh, um, Architectura Musgalita. Frank Gehry, Art Tower, because he was the, 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 the provocateur. He was the one who stirred me up to uh, address, you know, even in a sketchy way, like now, the subject. I like this tower, although I know there are people who don't like it. If there is something I don't like, it's not the top part, it's the bass, the so-called drum. But when I read that he made it in this way in order to parallel uh, the, the Roman amphitheater, which, was also, which is also round, then it became to make sense. But you see, this man is not just merging architecture. He also thought of the context. But still, the most important, the most impressive, in a way, part of the building, I think, is the top part. Uh, and uh, it, it looked even more impressive when it was in the process of becoming, that is, during construction. Uh, you see here a fragment of the of the amphitheater, the Roman amphitheater, and the tower is somewhere here. That is, let's see. If, yeah, you see the, the Roman uh, amphitheater, and this is the building by um, by Gary. Gary is not as superficial as some people might think, and he he is immersed. In fact, it surprised me that he recalled he studied in in France too. Uh, for a while, and he, he remembered traveling towards the south of France where Arles is, and he saw um, uh, the, the, the church of Auton, which is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Roman uh, uh, church with great uh, sculptures of a, of, a, of, a, of a sculptor whose name is known, Gislibertus. At that time, you know, artists and architects were anonymous, but, but this particular sculptor who had genius, his name is known, his Libertus, truly great, uh, the Church of Auton, A-U-T-U-N. And then uh, Bézalet, which I had the chance to see, and uh, which is also great. So you see, uh, it's so easy for people to throw stones at Frank Gehry, thinking that he's just doing musgalitur. You are wrong. Those people who, who think in this way are wrong. Eisenman and Frank Gehry are very knowledgeable people, and they know about the history of art and architecture a lot. And here you have, actually, the more I looked at this part of his building, the more somehow I see the contorted, tragic spirit of Vincent van Gogh. And I think this building is actually an homage to Van Gogh. Van Gogh himself was a nuisance and a, and a, and a nut, if I am to express myself, you know, uh, maybe inappropriately, in the context of Arles, a mad art artist, the mad artist. Well, this is the mad tower. It's really the architectural uh, reflection of, of uh, of, of, of the biography and the status of, of Vincent van Gogh within, uh, within Arles. And, and, and yes, I do see, he even mentioned the two paintings that influenced him when, when he designed, if we are to use this word, Când am zgălit această clădire, um, uh, there are some mountains nearby that, that Vincent van Gogh painted, and also uh, the Starry Night, the famous painting again by Vincent van Gogh. Something like this would never be done in our country because our education is too restrictive and, and too timid, you know, it takes a it takes a 92 years old man to build it, you know, and he built it. And some people criticize it, but I think there is also a lot of envy, because created, he created something. It is true, not everything is totally new considering his oeuvre. I mean, you know, uh, there are stylistic elements that uh, are present in many of his works. But still, it has its own individuality, I think, this tower. And somehow reading that he was interested in, you know, reflecting on, 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 on Vincent van Gogh in Arles seems to add some light to what he wanted to do here. 
But what I see particularly in this part, because here I can see Richard's laboratories by Louis Kahn, but here I, I see actually uh, the power of, of, uh, of, uh, of chains. This is chains architecture. You know, just like uh, the, there is chains music uh, uh, or the music of chains in John Cage. But for this, you need an avant-garde state of mind. You need to understand that there is nothing wrong with aleatory, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, elements in, in your work. You just let things flow without controlling them, uh, without apparently controlling them, because I understood they made 100 models and many studies during many years until they arrived at this particular configuration of the building. Uh, but I, I still think it's an interesting building. And now that I know that this drum is actually uh, having a dialogue with the Roman amphitheater, um, I'm beginning to accept this as well. So, you know, he's not, he's, he's not totally a, a non-contextualist. I mean, the fact that he, want, he referred to the metaphysical context uh, trying to relate his buildings to the paintings of Vincent van Gogh, and then the drum, the bass, is uh, is having a dialogue with uh, with a Roman amphitheater. Shows that actually uh, Frank Gehry uh, was not indifferent to the context. I think it's a good building. It is a good building and uh, yes, it is provocative. Yes, it makes us question. Yes, it makes us maybe even uncomfortable. I don't know if it truly expresses what he wanted to arrive at and that is a happy insecurity. But the element of insecurity derives from the fact that he gave up control, at least in its apparent, uh, um, uh, you know, explicit uh, uh, manifestation. It really, I mean, on one hand, it makes me laugh. On the other hand, it makes me sad that there are people in our country who throw stones at this work and at its architect, but they will never be able to do something like this. Why? They, they, don't, they don't have the imagination. They don't have the means. In order to do this, you need a factory, the digital factory that uh, this man has. You know, you cannot build something like this just, I mean, yes, he does the musgalitura, but, but the musgalitura becomes a building and it becomes a building because he is equipped to make it a building, to make it into a building. The Guggenheim Museum, now here I show you something that I did and uh, you know, at least Francesca knows it. I apologize, I don't like to repeat myself, but I show a few things by me here, not in order to, glorify my uh, quest for insecurity but just to show you something what what happened is i could have i could have included many works there are architects who work in the field of insecurity or dangerous architecture this is a first attempt at the sketch in essence because yesterday i i mainly wanted to talk about stefan Celmare, and this was by the way of uh, the interview with Frank Gehry that was publicized on the Zine and uh, Arch Daily and so on. But here I, I did myself a sketch, almost Galitura, with Arch Archicad, of an old version, for a competition. I didn't send it to Helsinki, I just did it, and I, as I did many times before, I didn't send it. This is uh, my issue and uh, you know, I, I can talk about it. Uh, it's, it's my limitation. I didn't send it, but it's just a sketch. The, um, the competition site was this one with red. And uh, oh, by the way, in the jury, there was Ginny Gang, who was a guest here on Zoom uh, uh, on her birthday this year. And uh, Mark Wigley, who was the curator of the deconstructivist exhibition in uh, New York at the Museum of Modern Art in 1992 or 1993. Anyway, this was the site. And uh, this is what I did, talking about insecurity and talking about musgalitura. 
this is the top view of the building as it, it's it's still just a sketch I, I i just modeled in a primitive way with a primitive version of archicad what you are going to see and, and and i know what is wrong with it i also know what is good with it what is good with this is that i it it it, it turned out to be some kind of an iceberg and I, I created kind of a motto for my sketch. If the, if the icebergs are melting, let's build an iceberg. And here it is. Now, because I am, I, I'm not a master in manipulating Arch Archicad, uh, this was not done as, as well as I would have liked it to be done. But roughly, it represents kind of it is informal, it is uh, aleatory, it is, uh, uh, there is a level of insecurity because, because there is no cont cont control here. You know, this, the, these intersections between these roofs, and this is also a roof building. In fact, literally it is done with roofs, nothing but roofs. Now I know that for a museum, glass is not a good material, but this could have been solved, you know, you, you could have had a, a second skin, uh, a second roof, opaque maybe, underneath the glass one, and then like a hill on which uh, people could sit or whatever. Anyway, uh, it, this is what uh, I made. I made with my own hands. I didn't have a factory like Frank Gehry, uh, but, but it was in a way almost Galitura Architecturale. It could have been developed, I think, but uh, that's all. That's all I was able to do. Uh, this sketch. Okay. Now I did another project. This one I worked together with Shahira Hamad, and you are going to see two works by her too. She's an Egyptian architect who works now in, the, in New York. She was actually born in the United States, but uh, her parents Egyptian, and, and then they lived, uh, she studied in Egypt and in, in Vienna at the Institute of Architecture. And uh, this is a, a museum of knowledge. I, I'm not reading you the text, but I, 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 I will tell you something about um, uh, how, how it came into being. I didn't know how to make the museum, so uh, uh, one day I, I was living in Titan in, in, in Bucharest and I was going to buy some food and I found near, near a tree um, an object. In fact, this object that you see here, uh, not very big, like uh, 20 centimeters by 15 or something. And I liked it very much. And uh, I bought some food and when I came back, I picked it up and I went with it home and I put it on the table and uh, after staring at it for a while, I said, this is the museum. So it's like objet trouvé, you know, a uh, found object. So I, 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 uh, I, uh, uh, I asked Shakira to help me to model this object into, into a museum. So she worked with Maya and it's too bad now. This is a short, sketchy presentation. I'm not reading the text, but the text has a certain importance. And if you want to, to read it, I can, send you, um, I can send you the text. So this was the object that I found in Bucharest near a tree as I photographed it. And we decided together that this would be the museum, the Museum of Knowledge. There is insecurity here because, first of all, the, the, the way we, f I, we I found this, you know, it was found, you know, it was in, in a way dangerous because it was not born of my reason, you know, of my questing reason. Then it's also the, um, you know, it has this aspect of musgalitura in three dimensions. It, it's, it's, it's a chance encounter. And with a, with a, I mean, the object itself was not designed, but I like this fact. And uh, here you see the plan of Chandigarh with the buildings by Le Corbusier. And this is a top view of our Museum of Knowledge. 
uh, and here you see big, uh, th these are the long elevations of the museum and the top view. Again, this was based, I mean, we changed almost nothing. In fact, the, the object I found was the best version of everything we did. And anyway, this is again, the well-known uh, site plan of the, you know, the governmental buildings uh, at Chandigarh. Uh, by the way, this building here is uh, one that is less known by Le Corbusier, but very important and with a very interesting function. This is named wrongly here, it's actually this one, the Tower of Shadows, a very interesting structure. And our museum here, with the object found near a tree uh, in Titan, Bucharest. Top view, and the elevations. But now I regret I didn't uh, include the text because the text would have been important because it would have explained um, a posteriori why this would have, would have worked in my conception uh, as a museum of knowledge. It was rough, it was imperfect, it was uh, uh, unfinished, uh, just as I think knowledge itself is, if we are to be honest. A side elevation, the other side elevation, and uh, this was the one of the two drawings or posters that I don't even know if it was sent because she told me that she sent it, but she didn't receive confirmation, uh, I mean, to India. Anyway. But we did it. Um, and here you have the clients, two, uh, two uh, yogis, so to speak, and this was supposed to be the museum. I, I, I keep saying architecture is beautiful if it is an adventure. And the more adventurous the adventure, the better. I'm not claiming that we did a great work, but it was an adventure. And this is the... Um, you know, again, it could have been developed. For example, something that bothered me was that these, these grids were a little bit too rigid. I would have seen ivy on it, you know, so to just like in the model to, have, to, to be more organic, but you have to understand she did this as, a, as, an, active, as an active model. I mean, an active project uh, and um, yeah, you know, this was a lot of work. Again, the students here study uh, Maya in the first year. They know nothing. They know they they don't learn any Maya. It's it's just to say we learn Maya. But I didn't yet meet a student who learned Maya. First of all, it shouldn't be taught in the first year. Maya is a diffi well rather difficult. Uh, program and you, you you need some experience in order to 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 arrive at the level of you know creating uh, uh, you know the, the, this sort of thing. Uh, anyway, yeah, this is what bothers me, and I told Shahira, but she did, didn't have time to 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 make it a little bit more interwoven and uh, less rigid. But all in all, it, it could have been interesting if we could have if we could have reproduced almost identically what I found near that tree into the project. It's about incompleteness. It's about a broken system. It's about what actually knowledge is. Knowledge is not static and is never achieved. At you know, it's 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 all already. All, always a process. And uh, uh, something like this, I saw that that object that I found could have evoked. Now, I did also a so-called hopeless cathedral. And this was uh, an homage to Emil Choran. And I wrote, I also worked with, uh, I, this I did with my own hands. Uh, what you saw previously was done by Shahira. 
in, in Maya. But, but what you are going to see is, is it was done by me with all the limitations inherent uh, in uh, being done by me. A cathedral without hope is the ultimate oxymoron. A cathedral is an upwards movement towards nothing else but hope. This is why perhaps Nietzsche was against hope because obviously he was against the cathedral. A hopeless cathedral is Sisyphus cathedral except that Sisyphus neither needed nor envisioned a cathedral, even if he was perhaps the one who needed it the most. But to build it without actually believing in its power, powers is to act against its true nature. Thus, a hopeless cathedral is a contradiction in terms, since oxymoronic. But it is better to acknowledge its inner contradictions than to entertain unsustainable illusions. And this is, this is the top view of, of the cathedral done again with uh, Archicad 7. And it's not, it's not, this is what I was, I, I, I will try to stress. When I began to model, I didn't think of a cathedral. The possible function came to me after the thing was, after I arrived at what you see. What I'm trying to say is possible to do architecture the same way a painter does a painting. You begin to paint without knowing where you arrive at. You can you begin a project without knowing what you are uh, what you will arrive at. Or as Lebia Sud said, you we should first build our buildings and then learn how to live in them. But this is the in 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 in, uh, in a drastic opposition to functionalism. You know, and it's it's almost like uh, how to say uh, um, uh, I don't find now the word um, unintentional architectures. Yes, how could you build an arch un unintentional architecture? I think this could be a very interesting building, and I I found it. I didn't search for it. You maybe know that Picasso said, I don't search for, I don't search, I find. These things are also found objects. But there is something interesting in this process, you know. I, I didn't plan to design a cathedral. I, I found it without searching for it. Anyway, Günther Domenic, uh, Austria, a very interesting architect. Uh, he died. This is his own house. And of course, there is danger here. Of course, there is insecurity. I understood that even one of his relatives, an uncle or something, broke his neck or his leg here in this house. This is his own house. Look at this mad plan. The only recognizable thing here is the toilet, of course, and the stair a little bit. But uh, everything else is, is mad. Look at this. This is architectural insecurity. Hello, functionalists. Where are you? Let's talk about this. In a way, it's action architecture. Maybe you know about action painting like Jackson Pollock. Well, this is action architecture. It's really architectural insecurity. I'm not so much, and I think this is the limitation of the project. Uh, the materials are not very convincing. I mean, I, I would have used, uh, you know, maybe even these stones here or uh, anyway, some, some organic materials is too metallic and it looks too contrived and too a little bit institutional for my taste. But all in all, it's an interesting building and the plans, as you saw them, are very interesting. He labored at this building for some years. It is an expression of insecurity. Now, this is what most people think about when, when they think about a home or a house, this. But not this. But this is what Günther Domenic built. You 
Yes, it bothers me that in such architectures you 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 have all kinds of uh, well. These are not really very disturbing architecturally, but it's very difficult to escape the determinism of the stairs. Uh, it's not it's not impossible, but it's 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 difficult. And this was also the case with that roof mo remodeling by uh, by. Uh, uh, Wolf Pricks. Like here too, where is the danger of this? You see, these are, how do you do a stair which is not uh, as predictable as most stairs are? I guess you have to, to, to distort some of these uh, uh, elements. You have to maybe skip a few or I, I, I don't know. There is here a determinism which bothers me in relation with this. Because it's like there are two different systems. There is no danger here. Here there is. There is no insecurity here. Here there is. So this is Günther Domenig, an, uh, an interesting Austrian architect, and you are going to see also a bank he designed, uh, which was uh, the talk of the town, so to speak, in Vienna, not only in Vienna. But, but you know, look at these houses here, this one or uh, this, and then here comes uh, Günther Domenig with his insecurities externalized. It's not really a home. In in my opinion, it looks too. It, it looks like a museum. Like it's too institutional. Like, but um, the attempt to break it uh, dramatically is perhaps uh, worth uh, contemplating. Perhaps, but this work I think is his best work. Very radical. It was built at the end of the 60s, the beginning of the 70s, so 50 years ago. The Z Bank. Look at the ceiling. <laughs> it was built like this. Talking about insecurities, about musgalele architecturale, talking about, uh, you know, uh, complexity and contradiction, but in a different way than uh, Robert Venturi envisioned it. Talking about uh, viscerality, this is very visceral. Look at this. Who said, who said that everything has to be rational and square and, uh, you know, quiet? Why? Why? I find the work very interesting. Unsettling as it is, and exactly because it is unsettling. It's amazing that the bank accepted it and paid for it. This is actually, this person is a student. Uh, hello, Anna, if you are still here. She's from Timisoara uh, because we, I went with a group of uh, students, not fr just from Bucharest to Vienna. And I think, yeah, she, she was from Timisoara, but I forgot her name. Anyway. Um, Now, of course, this has nothing in common with Stefan Celmare, but the biography of Stefan Celmare also was about danger. It was a dangerous time. There were many wars. There was death. I just read that I saw I saw that the, the Arbore Church, which is 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 my preferred one out of all of them, was was built by Stefan Celmare, but actually was built by one of his. Uh, um, collaborator, so to speak, uh, Luca Arbore, uh, an important, uh, uh, you know, uh, how to say, uh, he worked for Stefan Celmare and he was decapitated uh, later in his life. Uh, but he built uh, that beautiful, beautiful Arbore church. So it was, 
maybe the maybe the churches do not represent literally danger or insecurity but there were very insecure times with many wars and those churches were ex expressions of you know there were there were, um, there were um, uh, offerings of, of Stefan Celmare to uh, you know, to, I don't know, to, to God, to fate, to, uh, I don't know, there were, there were the homages to, on one hand, to those who perished in the wars, and, you know, he was victorious in many of the fights, but it was a difficult life, very, very difficult and insecure life. In a way, what we look at here is war. Uh, in abstract terms, this is the fight between one of the fights between Stefan Celmare and the Turks, the Ottomans, for example, we could say. Now, Eric Miraes, Pergolas in Barcelona. I mean, look at them. They are, they are aggressive. They, are, uh, they, they provoke insecurity. They are, they, they are not comforting. But why is architecture supposed to be just about comfort? This obsession with comfort is really diminishing architecture a lot. And it shouldn't. I like these pergolas by, by uh, Enric Miraes. And yes, they are about danger. Uh, they are not really about protection. They are not protecting you. They are stirring you up, actually. They are, in a way, what the timid one here would call musgalitura architectural. <laughs> but I, 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 I still like the word musgalitura very, very much. And I really think very interesting buildings could be done through Musgalituri Architecturale. Now I show you the train station. Uh, this was the diploma work of Shakira Hamadi in Vienna at the Institute of Architecture, the excessive program. Look at this interior. Can you imagine? And uh, she was very appreciated for this work. But of course, Vienna is a very primitive city, right? Uncivilized and all the rest. They know nothing about architecture. We know about architecture. Something like this would have been inconceivable in any school of architecture in our country, but not in Vienna. Because they understand that education is, 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 uh, is about exploration. You explore, you know, uh, you explore the, the unknown. And, and uh, that's what she did through Maya. And I'm absolutely sure if this church, if this, uh, I call it church, if this train station was built, uh, maybe we would have been out there in Vienna to explore it. This is a, a view from the top. Um, I have shown this work before, it's, uh, but uh, I, I still think, uh, I still think we need to be radical. Because if we are not radical, we are in mellow waters. In mellow waters, we cannot create anything more than something mellow. Uh, you know, Brunkush was radical. We must tell the truth. Brunkush was a radical sculptor. He had immense courage when he transformed literally, uh, you know, the, the sculpture until him into something else. In fact, he was so radical that when he sent his sculptures to the United States, uh, they, 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 uh, 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 wanted him to pay uh, for uh, industrial objects being sent because the uh, the Vamal uh, uh, section of uh, you know entering U.S. they were they were not considered art. So we should stop being mellow. Brancusi was highly radical, 
And unless we are radical ourselves, we are not going to create anything significant. To be radical, you need to be honest and to be explorative, to have courage. This is the train station by Shahira Hamad. Look at this. Again, if she would have done this work in any school of architecture in, in our country, she would have been considered mad. But not in Vienna. Is there insecurity here? Of course there is. Is there danger here? Of course there is. These are studies for the tower done in Maya. They studied Maya in school and this was a school for architects. You entered excessive, the excessive program after you already got a diploma in architecture from wherever you studied. And so they were already young architects who entered the postgraduate program uh, at IOA. And for one semester and a half, they studied Maya very seri seriously. And then the other semester and a half, they did a diploma. And these were, these were studies for, for her diploma. Sorry for the, for the resolution. I didn't expect them to be so uh, unclear. Anyway, you, 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 you got an idea about, uh, about what she did here. This was called, she called it an asemic forest. Asemic in the sense of, uh, this is an interesting word, you know, uh, without a semantic um, uh, content or value. And before she did this work, she redesigned the Westbahnhof subway station in Vienna. So what you saw previously was the Westbahnhof, the um, west, uh, section of the West uh, train station, and this is the subway station. Now the rationalist would begin to tremble, get furious, and leave the room by slamming the door. That's what the rational, rationalist would say, would, would say, me would, would do. But the rationalist would, would have had the same reaction vis-a-vis -vis the work of Antoni Gaudi. Not now, of course. Now Antoni Gaudi is accepted and applauded and is uh, almost in, on his way to become a saint. But you know what I'm trying to say is at first what is new shocks you and you, you attempt it to throw stones at it. But after a while, uh, you begin to absorb, to reconsider. And I still think that if this subway station was built just as uh, Shahira Hamad uh, modeled it, uh, would have been the most interesting subway station in the world. Uh, let's, let's tell the truth. Much more interesting than the subway stations of, uh, let's say, Sir Norman Foster. Why? Exactly because it has uh, aleatory freedom, it is not controlled, is organic, is uh, insecure, is dangerous. But it's interesting, it's complex, it's contorted, it's, it's dense and intense. And yes, it's about disorder. So what's wrong with disorder? And this is a fragment uh, 3D printed, which in itself I think is very nice. Again, the, the timid rationalist would protest, would say, well, this is not architecture, or well, here we are squandering the money for uh, the extravagant gesture of a mad architect, or I don't know, something like this. But many of the artistic gestures of the world were considered at the beginning or uh, at a certain time as being mad gestures. But what, uh, what would we do without that madness? As Plato said, there are four kinds of madness. To be in love, to be a prophet, to be a poet and to be clinically mad. 
But I really think, I mean, I, I personally prefer this kind of so-called madness than the boring sameness of, of the things which bring nothing new to the world. Because I think Frank Lloyd, uh, Louis Kahn was, was correct. Uh, beginnings are in harmony with the human nature. And, and what is a beginning? It's, it's the coming into being of the new. That's what the beginning is. So at first it shocks you, it surprises you, but, but it's a beginning. In Romanian, I would call this Hatsish architectural. Hatsish architectural, yes. Too bad she plays this uh, <laughs> annoying escalators here. You know, she, she could have uh, contorted the escalators too, but she didn't. Anyway, you would say it could be a contrast between the reasonable escalators and the and Hatsishul architectural that is above, maybe. Does this have anything to do with Stefan Chelmar? As I said before, I think it does, because that the many wars that Stefan Chelmar had to wage and the sacrifices and the deaths and the tensions and the, the you know the the misery and all these things that life had for him and many around him at that time uh, do have something you know in common perhaps with what Shahira tried to uh, depict through this um, mad architecture. What bothers me is that we have in Romania, we have the imagination to do interesting things, but we don't have the language, we don't have the tools. Because if you spend time working with a T-square and a rectangle, in time you cannot even conceive of doing something like this, because something like this you cannot even draw with a T-square and a rectangle. You need a different tool, you need a different language, and unless you know that language very well, even if you might have the intuition of doing something like this, maybe, uh, you cannot express it because you don't have the language. It's like you are in a foreign country and you try to communicate with the people of that country and you don't know the language. So you are paralyzed. And this is the situation we place ourselves in by not learning softwares at the highest level. We are actually handicapping ourselves. Why digital technologies are not taught in the universities in our country and the faculties and so on is beyond me. I don't understand. I don't understand. We would benefit greatly, but unfortunately here we are just four people. There is no professor, no assistant. Uh, they're not interested. So I talk, you listen, but nothing happens because anyway, this is again, it was just a short sketch about a complex subject, I would say, insecure architecture. Și alte muzgaleri architecturale. I will stop now here and uh...